Hi, this is Scott Kilos here, 6 Delta Alpha Yankee, and for today's video, I'm doing a follow-up on the TID Radio TDH3 and TDH8. In this case, what I'm doing is um, I have tested both of these through the TinySA Ultra Spectrum Analyzer and taken a look at the spurious emissions uh, uh, issues, if any, that are related to these radios. And as promised, going forward, all new radio reviews will include a spurious emissions test. Um, but I also uh, committed to coming back and taking a look at radios that I've reviewed in the past and seeing what kind of spurious emissions those radios produce. Since I've do done so much recent work with the TID radios here, um, I thought these would be the best candidate to go ahead and start this process off on. Now, um, one other thing, in presenting the results, um, I could go about this a couple of different ways. I could set it up and actually run the test and, and, and show you the results on, on the screen, and it takes a little while to set that up. It's not terribly easy to see, um, and to be honest with you, all we're going to do is arrive at the, at the same results that I'm about to read off of you through my low-tech notation device right here. Um, so what I'm doing in, in this testing is I'm making sure that every radio I test, I'm using the same frequency ranges, I'm using the same equipment, I'm using the, exactly the same procedure and process, um, the whole gamut. Um, but furthermore, something I'm doing a little different than tests I've seen run by other people on these radios is most of the time I'll see them run, for instance, I'll test 146.520 and then just call it a day. Um, I feel there's some value in going through and looking at the entire frequency range that the radio is capable of and testing the spurious emissions throughout that range. So in the case of, for instance, the TDH3, I'm testing, uh, <coughs> excuse me, I'm testing VHF1, so that's your uh, two meter band. I'm testing 70 centimeter um, in UHF. I'm testing GMRS, and I'm testing two channels within GMRS to show the full range. And of course, here we've got VHF2, which is going to be your 1.25 meter band. Um, so these are the results. So let me go ahead and read those off to you now. And as a reminder, the standards are this for transceivers of 25 watts or less output. Um, a pass is any dB amount greater than 40 below the fundamental. So your first harmonic needs to be at least or better than 40 dB below that fundamental frequency. Um, anything less than 40 is obviously going to be a fail. So um, starting off, I tested for uh, VHF 146.415, and the first harmonic below the fundamental was 56.4. And also, there are multiple harmonics that are coming off of this. You got, you know, two, three, four, five, you know, and, and five is about the worst that I've seen so far. But uh, it's throwing spurs all the way down, but they are in descending order. I haven't had, for instance, a four higher than a three. Um, so I, and if that comes up, I'll mention it. But in this case, um, this is your worst case scenario here. Is going to be your, your first harmonic below the fundamental. So like I said, 146.415, 56.4, below, channel 1462.5625, and channel 8467.5625. For channel 1, we got 42.9, and for channel 8, we got 43.6. And of course, on the 1.25 meter, I tested 223.400, and I got 50.7 for the first harmonic below the fundamental. So we got a pass on the the TDH3 on the H8, 146.415 produced 52.8 for uh, dB for the uh, first harmonic below the fundamental. 441.000, we got 42.4 below. Channel 1 and channel 8, 462.5625, 467.5625, we got 47.2 and 48.5. So we got a pass all the way across the board on both radios. Now, um, 42, where's the worst? 42.4 was the the closest I got to a fail, and that's close enough to maybe be within the margin of error here, so we're a little close there. But uh, it's not the picture that I've been sold in the past by other people that have tested these. have said, you know, I've, I've heard some people say these things have horrible, um, horrible spurious emissions, and that doesn't seem to be the case, at least according to the instrumentation I'm using, and uh, confined to the two example radios that I have here. And you have to keep that in mind. These are the two radios I'm testing. These are the two radios that I have. It doesn't apply to the entire line. If there are some other people out there that have some of these, that have excessive spurious emissions, I would not be surprised. I genuinely would not. But in my case, well, this is not the case in my case. How about that? We got to we got to pass on both radios. So sorry, we went a little long-winded on this one. Um, 
the ones in the future pro should probably be down to about three minutes tops uh, to present the results and then we can just move on to the next thing because well this is something to look at uh, except for examples where where I discover something that's really gross and disgusting um, if I do encounter something like that yeah I'll probably break down and show you the detailed testing on that just so you can see just how bad it is but uh, we got good results on this one so far so with that I will thank you for watching and or listening this is Scott Kilo Sierra 6 Delta Alpha Yankee from Visalia California have a wonderful day